Hi guys, Mr. Pollock Biology here, and we're looking at question 8 from uh, June 2014's AS Level Unit 2 paper. Uh, the last two questions tend to get a little bit more tricky um, in terms of the length of the answers that are required and also the data that you're expected to work with. Uh, this is a DNA heavy um, question, this question 8, so we'll get stuck into it and see how we do. I apologise in advance if there's any odd sounds during this video. There is a dog sat very, very close to me. So keep your ears out, or don't keep your ears out, I should say. So first question, uh, how is the structure of DNA uh, related to its functions? This is a nice question, actually. Six marks, and six marks that you can really easily rattle off. So DNA is our beautiful double helix that stores huge amounts of information because it's a massive molecule. So let's get started and try and bash through six marks. So first mark, it's large. So it stores lots of data, stores lots of information. Massive molecule DNA. Um, but also, it's incredibly compact because it forms a helix. So its helical structure makes it compact uh, and more convenient to have in your cell. Um, two marks, nice and straightforward. Uh, what else has it got? Well, uh, the base sequence, the base, the order of the bases, uh, that determines and codes for amino acids. Determine amino acids. So it's used to build proteins. So it codes for proteins. What else has it got? Um, well, it's got a it's got a sugar phosphate backbone. It's got a ribose phosphate backbone, um, and that gives it stability. So ribose phosphate backbone sorry about my handwriting there's a dog scratching there you might be able to hear it uh, equals stability from the backbone what else it's not just a helix it's a double helix so that means we've got two strands um, and that those two strands mean that we can do semi-conservative replication Semi con rep. Nice, straightforward. So already we've hit five out of the six marks. Um, now, if we think about the base pairing, uh, we've got complementary base pairs. Comp base pairs. And the great thing about that is means when you replicate, you get accurate replication. Because they copy exactly, they, they, they line up with their complementary bases and they work backwards to, to get a perfect uh, copy. It's raining now, so you might be able to hear rain in the background and dog, so my apologies. Uh, what else have we got that we can talk about? Uh, we've got hydrogen bonds that provide stability again. Uh, hydrogen bonds that occur between the base pairs, the complementary base pairs. Uh, or we could talk about the fact that those hydrogen bonds are weak and allow the whole strand, the two strands to be unzipped um, during replication. But we've got six marks there, um, so we can progress on quite nicely. Okay, a uh, bit of an application question now. Scientists investigate three genes, C, D, and E, involved in controlling cell division. They study the effect of mutations in these genes on the risk of develop developing lung cancer. The scientists analysed genes C, D, and E from healthy people and people with lung cancer. If a person had a normal allele for a gene, they use the symbol N. If they had two mutant alleles for a gene, they use the symbol M. So N for normal, M for mutant. And they use their data to calculate the risk of developing lung cancer for people with different combinations of those alleles. A risk value of 1 indicates no increased risk. Um, so here's our table. It's a bit of a difficult one to read at first glance, so let's colour code it. Uh, let's have normals um, as being green, so normal, 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 and let's have mutants as being pink, mutant, mutant, mutant. So, basically what we've got is we've got four sets of data, set one tells us what's going on if you've got all normal genes and we can see that there is no increased risk. 
set two gives us information about your uh, risk if you've got a mutant C gene. Data three gives us information about um, the risk with a mutant E gene. And data four gives us information about a mutant D gene's risk. So, question. What do the data suggest about the relative importance of the mutant alleles of genes C, D and E on increasing the risk of developing lung cancer? You can do this in three letters and two symbols. Okay? But we'll get to that. So first, let's look at which one gives the highest risk. And that is this guy right here. Okay? So... Gene C, uh, sorry, gene E has 1.78 as its risk, so that's by far and away the highest. Okay, so we can say that E highest risk, and then really all the marks are for saying what order they, what order is the risk in. So um, let's have a look. What's the next highest? Hey, look, D. Uh, D is the next highest. Dog's licking itself, sorry. Next highest. And then finally C is the lowest risk. But you can get away with this if you want to be really cheeky. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this at all because it doesn't always pay off. But in this case, the examiner will allow. E is greater than D is greater than C. If you're really interested in saving ink, you know, three letters two symbols, three marks, done. So let's move on a little bit. Chemotherapy is the use of a drug to treat cancer. The drug kills dividing cells. Figure 5 shows the number of healthy cells and cancer cells in the blood of a patient receiving chemo. The arrows labelled F to I show when the drug was given. So he's having it every 21 days, so three weekly intervals. All right. Oops, I'll just get rid of that. That was from a previous take on this video. Well, I messed it up. <laughs> so, calculate the rate at which healthy cells were killed between days 42 and 46. Right. Day 42. Let's find it. Day 42. It's going to be here. Way not easy drawing a straight line on an iPad. Where are we going for that one? Yeah. And then day 46 is going to be here. Oh, convenient. They're on the crosses. Okay. So, reading off from here. Reading off from here. So, the bottom, that's what? That's 560. And at the top, that is... 1280 I believe so 1280 minus 560 get my calculator out uh, 1280 minus 560 is 720 we've got a four day period so we divide it by four gives us our answer of 180 cells killed per unit volume of blood per day. Fantastic. You have no idea how many times I've messed up that calculation trying to make this video through daft mistakes by using an iPad. All right, question 8D. Describe the similarities and differences in the response of healthy cells and cancer cells to the drug between times F and G. So let's get rid of all of this. So we're just looking at between F and G. So uh, it's just this region here. There we go. There we go. That's all we're looking at. So what are we going to say? Let's go for similarities first. Well, um, they both follow the same pattern. Okay. So healthy cells... And cancer cells follow the same pattern. Nice. Let's have a little look see. 
Uh, from there, we can go on to look at the differences. Um, and we can see that the healthy cells get killed much quicker. There's a much bigger decline here than here. So, healthy cells are killed quicker. Healthy cells. Sorry about the handwriting, I'm trying to be quick with this. So healthy cells are killed quicker. Um, and let's have a little look-see. But also, they replace themselves quicker as well, so they recover more quickly. So healthy cells, uh, they divide, divide quicker as well. There we go. One similarity, two differences, three marks. Excellent. Moving on. Question E. More cancer cells could be destroyed if the drug was given more frequently. Suggest why it wasn't given more frequently. Well, you would kill too many healthy cells. Too many healthy cells would be killed. And right, it's getting really sketchy now. So, so too many healthy cells will be killed if you were giving larger doses, sorry, more frequent doses of chemotherapy. And the obvious result of that would there could be side effects. And obviously the most, the most severe side effects, especially with something like chemo, is, is going to be death. So the person that you're treating may actually die. So that's the end of that question. Let's give ourselves a nice round 15 out of 15. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned for the final question on the June 2014 paper. Take care.